everybody it's Michael here from the trading institutional order flow thread on Forex factory I hope you're all well um, it's the 5th of December 2018 um, I just thought I'd um, do a new video today um, looking at all the wonderful posts that have gone up on the thread since um, I've been away um, we had a sudden death in the family and it's still the fallout is still going on so we're trying to rebalance and readjust and find a way to move on um, so I thought I'd um, post a chart today before I settle in for the funeral and and talk to you guys thank you to all of you who've been posting on on the thread I've just been having a look this morning Tobe 107 welcome Miyagi FX welcome YKN4F, always insightful with your questions. I like it. Well done, sir. Diddy, we're going to look at the New Zealand US dollar analysis um, in a bit. Okay. So thank you all for your decorum and, and kindness towards each other and keeping up the conversation. It's really interesting. I'm really um, pleased at the way um, everyone has conducted themselves and, and sharing the analysis. So let let's go for it let's go for it so we'll start with um we'll start with very this very insightful post miyagi for for a new member it's obvious that you you're not new <laughs> you've been you've been working um, behind the scenes the, the concepts um are pretty clear um in in your head from what i can see so thank you very much for for sharing that the issue with um zones that are outside um higher time frame levels that you were talking about it all ha it always all comes down to the probability and and how much of of your trading plan is involved in making rules um, around those levels they are lower probability levels ab initio you know to start with so the question then is what what type of personality trading personality human personality do you have um, to want to engage those zones so thank you for that insightful post. Multiple time frame analysis is is very key and foundational to to the methodology. It's not the only way um, to to make money in the markets. It's just the way that um, we use when we we trade supply and demand. So um, we try to stay away from from all the conversations about which methodology is better than the other because people make money with all sorts of methodologies. It's not about which one is better or not. It's which one can you work to help you make money. So um, let's do the New Zealand US dollar analysis um, for Diddy. We'll go into the charts and we'll take a look at the monthly, weekly, daily. Um, start, so we'll start with the monthly. Diddy, um, the, the um, analysis I think was pretty good. Um, I think just a few things I wanted to point out to you. So that's, that it is the New Zealand US dollar you asked for. Let's just make sure. Yes, that's the one you asked for. So let's do that. So that's the, we want to get the monthly chart up. So that's the monthly chart of the New Zealand US dollar. Um, and we can see that this market has gone up thrusting on us. And that's the, that's the demand we've got below us now. Oops, I need to change that color. I need to change that color. Yeah. So that's the demand we've got below us. We have taken out supply. We're coming up into a little bit of supply here. Not the greatest quality, but it's what we've got. So let's put that up. And we're coming up into it, actually gapping up into it from what I can see here. Is that a gap? That is a gap, isn't it? So, yeah, we're gapping up into it. So let's let's now go take a look and see what we've got in there. So we have demand still down in here. And we have supply there. We are becoming sideways. We can see that the downside momentum has ended with, um, it, it was a fast one with drop-based drops. And it's they've all been... Well, not all of them, but most of them have been taken out now. So let's take a look at the weekly and see what we've got. So as you can see, we're taking out weekly levels as well. Um, we're creating demand. Um, let me just get that. We're creating demand down in there. And we're coming up against 
are coming up against that now. So most appropriate action would be to wait to see what happens. It will be too high right now to be looking for buying opportunities. Um, probably best to wait and see how far prices do come up into um, supply before we, we try and look for selling opportunities. So for now, we still have demand on the daily, so the daily is still clearly in an uptrend. Um, that's the nearest one. You can see that gap more clearly now. Gaps don't tend to stay open for very long. So we probably will get some sort of pullback, whether it's just to fill the gap or to come into, into the demand level. And then go again. Yeah, so for short-term income trading, um, waiting for prices to come near to the demand zone would be probably the most appropriate action to take. Um, so nothing to do immediately, whether in the short term, if you're using the daily as your curve, that is, um, or, or, in the, um, or in the medium to long term just yet. It's almost there, but definitely want to be on, on the watch list. Yeah. So let's go over to Tobe. Yeah, so Tobe 107 and um, Miyagi, the conversation you guys had about um, the Australian dollar. There was something somebody mentioned about going down to the five minute when, when they're bored. I think it was, was it Tobe or Miyagi? I can't remember. Um, that kind of rang, rang uh, some bells for me about how seriously um, it is important to be clear on, on what you're doing on, on the time frames. Just, just a hint, uh, or a hint rather, there's what a hint, <laughs> just a hint to, 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 to be like really clear if, you, if it's not in, in your plan to look at a five minute chart, um, don't do it. Don't trade bored, um, trade focused. If you're, if you're looking at the 60 and the 15, that's fine understand why you're doing it and stay with that that's just some advice it's I'm not I don't mean to pick on anybody's trade or anything but the trade worked out well um, which of course should not be the outcome of whether a trade was was a good trade or not it was from the analysis that I've seen and read the thought process was excellent um, and it's probably a trade that 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 trader would take over and over again and and is clear in their mind as to why which is which is really something rare in, in, in the markets. Most people just, you know, shoot, shoot off the seats of their pants, which is not the way to, to build a sustainable um, trading career. So thank you for, for sharing your thoughts with each other in a respectful manner again. Um, with this trade, oh yes, YKNF, with this trade, I think the first entry up there was what was being referred to. And that was one trade. That was an, a second opportunity to get into the trade. Um, and you had other opportunities as well to get, you can see the pullbacks. And that's on a time frame as small as a five minute chart, but that's because it then developed into a trend. You saw a trend up, you saw the sideways movement up here. So the different stages of a market that we often talk about a lot in the on the round table and, and being aware of where, what stage the market is in. This could have also been a, a, a rally up, the market going sideways and it continued its uptrend it's always known really after the fact but that's what trading is about it's speculation so knowing whether to go short up in here or just to wait for a breakout above the highs before you go long that would have been um, something to to learn over time and we will all we hopefully will all have our lessons to learn and we'll be talking a lot about these kind of concepts um, at the webinar which is now slated for the 15th of December so just before Christmas to give you guys some thoughts as to how to prepare for 2019 we've been doing a lot of that in the roundtable um, the guys we've, we've been going over our data I've I've been going over mine um, and and come up with some great great insights and we're we're all prepping for 2019 as the market slow down into the holiday season we're working we're working so keep keep it up don't we, we often hear a lot of people have passion for trading, but the passion is really in the work. It's, this is not, not nothing um, new to us. So, yeah. So thank you again to all of you. Let's take a quick look at some 
some markets it's going to be a slightly longer video today but we'll we will do what's today today is Wednesday so let's let's take a look at daily charts we're looking for short-term income because we're in we're midweek so you guys recall these levels from the dollar I remember pointing out that level and also saying that there was a bit above into that area so really drawing it like that just to include the the highs of the zone would not have been would not have gone amiss that would have been fine um, you can see what the issue has been because that range has been tight so the market has just gone flat and sideways in here because we had demand down in here with the rally out multiple tests into it yet to be broken back into that supply area again we are forming higher highs and higher lows so the dollars in 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 the range um, with a, a very tight range so I'm not sure and don't know I'm not really sure that we care um, how long it's going to be in here whether it'll break it over the holiday season who knows but for now it, it kind of makes it a bit tricky as to knowing the decision so you decision to make so you I would suggest being very very picky about the zones that you trade up in in the US dollar and um, the euro um, going forward over the next few days and weeks because we are in this range until we get a directional move the market's just gone flat the two of them so let's take a look at the Aussie US dollar in the short term I think there was some news that came out um, in the Aussie US about an hour ago and you can see the reaction of it it's causing this push down we've managed to pop our heads above that supply zone there so now we have some demand in here and the next obvious supply zone is not until there so for short-term income trading be, being an observant trader trader who's done his or her homework um, on on the pair will be trying to see how much of a hold do you get in this zone um, and looking for for buying opportunities definitely not a place to be looking for for sales um, but looking for buying opportunities and if that zone is broken um, we change our perspective because that market is now showing a change in character um, and so we we trade it accordingly and looking at the pound US dollar nothing to do here moving swiftly on we've talked about the New Zealand already um, but just let's do it on a smaller time frame so for the New Zealand in terms of fresh levels and levels above current price we've still got supply there and we've got some demand down in here so it's similar similar so that's what we've got short-term income levels to keep an eye on and for the US dollar Canadian you can see the sideways market we have in the US dollar reflecting itself here as well in the um, in the Canadian and ultimately that zone is what is still keeping everything up so definitely not looking for longs now and the Swiss US dollar Swiss again a flat market nothing to do here in US dollar Canadian uh, US dollar Japanese I mean sorry um, we're reacting off of s a previously tested demand zone um, and we're going up as some just include the whole zone that's the mother zone as we say but include the whole zone there so that's what we've got so I'm gonna be saying let's look for some opportunities to get along how we do that is is the intricacies and the nuances that we often talk about um, in, uh, in in the chat and, and in the round table and the strategies that we use um, so that's supply that's demand and we're watching we still have yet to break that level it's still it's gone in it's come in you know second or third time I'm not sure now how um, people are trading it but it's definitely not a place to to be going um, to be going long um, in, in that market in fact let's take a look at the one hour chart 
so we can see is the one hour chart is giving us some supply the quality of the supply is another matter that needs assessment but we are seeing um, selling uh, coming into the market not surprising where that selling is beginning to happen let's take a look at oil and oil has had a serious break as we talked about the last time we were together um, we are reacting off of that it's the first supply zone that we've had a decent pullback to in weeks um, but the issue with that is we've also now got some demand down in here so probably will be going into some sort of range maybe even if they take this one out they might not go very far um, and come back again so maybe watching watching you the crude, crude uh, market over the next few days will probably give some selling opportunities and maybe some buying opportunities as well given the way this this chart is, is structured um, and same same with the um, with the Brent um, version same with the Brent version these are the levels yeah and copper apologies for the video being so long um, just been away for a while copper is not really going anywhere not really going anywhere so we've got extremes we've got extremes um, and we're sort of holding this upper range now with that supply still being the upper end of it so if we if you have a strategy there are strategies within supply and demand to trade ranges if you're using any of those then um, that would be the market to apply it in um, I think obviously copper is one that is very heavily influenced by Chinese data and the trade wars and stuff because of the the Chinese using a lot of copper probably one of the, some of the biggest users of copper in the world and for the S&P 500 um, we took a trade I took that trade um, yes it just exited yesterday um, off of the supply zone um, and we will we will talk about that trade when we meet again on the 15th we'll talk about with the anatomy of a trade um, going through the nuts and bolts of, of that trade you know so that everyone understands and be able to repeat it so the skill development part of it um, is what we'll, we'll go through as part of that that term free webinar on the 15th we're coming down to to demand and we have demand you can draw it like that we have some demand in there as well so we see over the holidays obviously the US markets are closed um, today because of the funeral for President Bush so there, there will be very light trading the bond market itself is totally closed I understand um, and the equities are, are also closed so the Dow is similar it didn't quite make it to the level that we were watching it did come back and test again that level and it's taken out um, some demand and we've got demand down in here so those are the levels those are the levels so again apologies for the length of the video but thank you all for sticking with it if you did up to this point <laughs> um, and thank you to all of you also for the kind words you've, you've um, shared with me and those of you who've been in touch I do appreciate it and I read all the posts um, as much as I can obviously um, and and it's it's good to see the development the you know fine tuning points obviously important um, points but overall um, I think the thread is hopefully even if I say so myself making a bit of a difference so please mark it in your diaries the 15th of December which is a Saturday it'll be at 8 30 p.m. UK time and it'll run for about 45 minutes if you would like to attend just send me your email address storehouseanalytics at gmail.com and I will send you an invite on the day of the webinar it's the 15th of December 8 30 p.m. UK time and it's storehouse analytics thank you all very much thank you for watching the videos trade safe bye everybody <laughs>